Hello and welcome. This is Alchemist X, and today we're going to be talking about Oct number eight of the Veda Templars, and in my opinion, one of the best units in the game, definitely one of the best wind units, only eclipsed by people who specialize in something intense, like, say, someone who can nuke like Dark Nyx or Naju or somebody who can support like crazy like Tamis. As far as just being a reliable unit and somebody who just won't die and under a lot of circumstances, as long as there's not any crazy like CC or weird modifier manipulation, someone who can solo a bunch of stages just by sheer impossibility to kill. Uh, so if a war of attrition is possible, Oct is going to win it. And if it's not, she still might be able to help out a team quite a bit because she has a lot of upsides and only a couple of downsides. So just a quick overview she has very high HP. She's incredibly hard to kill. She's got an excellent reactive that at close range is good for survivability and at long range is great for jewel economy. She's got CC and aggro manipulation, although n more limited than Naofumi's, but she's still capable of doing it. She's got pretty decent damage given how tanky she is for someone who specializes in not dying. She can she can hit some pretty decent numbers. Like I've I've hit like a 20 to 30k depending on the situation. She's got multiple damage types. She's got some slash, strike, missile, so that can be handy in levels where that matters. And then if you are fortunate enough to have her newest memento, you also get a transformation state that will not only restore her health, but it will also specialize in shield breaking, and sometimes shields are a pain. And then, of course, that amazing memento is also normal pool, just to make it even nicer. So as far as downsides go, really just that her second best memento, the one that's going to give you the snowballs, is limited. And then her farming is just one a day. So that can be kind of a pain, especially if you're on the newer end of the spectrum. Luckily, on the plus side, because she is pullable in normal um, summons, you can just get shards of her much faster than you would a typical limited unit. And then whenever you have the opportunity to get a unit selector or a shard selector, she is going to be on it. So... If you are still in the process of raising her, that is something to look forward to. So you can get that done, um, but just don't have to rush it too much. Because as far as wind shards go, I would definitely prioritize the limited SS tier units before her. But other than that, um, depending on what you have or what you don't have, it might be a good idea to just get her up uh, if you're in dire need of a really strong wind unit. So that is about it for the introductory spiel about Oct and why I think that she is so great. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at her kit on the unit screen. A quick detour before we go to the status screen. I made a sheet to compare and contrast Ox mementos because she has so many of them. And under the best of circumstances, you can only equip two of them. So. What we've got here are her four mementos. Uh, we'll call them the, the oldest one, the swimsuit one, the mug one, and the new one. And you can see the leader skill that offers at max limit break, as well as the max limit break bonus, as well as some just notable other traits that come with it as you level the memento up. So feel free to pause and screen cap, all that. So under the best case scenario, you've got your oct at gate six, and you have all of these mementos. My personal favorite is to have the mug memento in the main slot so you can benefit from the buff duration plus one. And then the new memento in the sub slot so you can get that slash attack that's strong versus humans, which can be pretty useful in some stages. Although that's definitely less important. You know, you people have different mementos, so just whatever you've got really in that sub slot. And then I don't necessarily recommend uh, max limit breaking the mug one unless you have tons and tons of lost blue reliefs and not pl good places to use them because there's a lot of good, like Soul has two, Eins has one with a really good bonus for maxing it. And then there's also the Goeta units to think about. So don't don't feel the need to get that at max limit break. But if you do, you'll get you know a pretty solid leader skill and a decent chunk of HP out of it, but definitely not high priority. So with mementos out of the way, now let's move on to gears. Okay, and here is the sheet that I made for Ox gears. So there are four VCRs and one free farmable gear 
that is farmable from Sacred Stone Memories, and how you set her up, like which which three of these five you put on her is going to depend very heavily on whether you have her newest memento. I think that's the biggest influence because say you've got the first three but not the newest, then just those three VCRs I think is the best way to set her up. But if you do have it, then with the battle dress, you're going to want to have the restrained eye patch for the extra stat bonus. And then you can only equip one of the three for your third slot, which I think most of the time the mug is going to be really good. Just get your base HP up really high. You get a defense snowball. And then you can usually offset the lack of HP regen for just HP draining moves. But... The other two could be viable options depending on what you need. Like you need untyped damage, then the wolf eye patch could be useful. Or if you absolutely have to have HP regen and, and you have the fantasy shells, then that can work as well. Although the fantasy shells are by far the most replaceable because Kukulon earrings or the Otima scarf could get the job done in the exact same way. But yeah, that is about it. So now let's go look at her on the screen and talk about her enlightenment and abilities. Okay, so I just realized that this is my first time doing a unit review on the new UI. So that's kind of fun. So as far as abilities go, I just think pretty much everything from her most recent job, plus her gate 2, which is from Valkyrie, and that's about it. For her truth seals, I went with charge forth and robust, just get P attack, P defense. If you've got flash or sweep and you really want damage out of her, that's viable too. But I usually try and save those for like really nuke oriented characters. But you know, everybody's situation with runes is different. So definitely feel free there. One thing I definitely do recommend though is to get strike attack on envy and then healing on gluttony. Because like strike is her main damage type and then extra healing is great, especially if you're running her in a way that doesn't have regen armor. So just the more she gets out of her draining moves, the merrier. Next, let's take a look at her gates. So gate one has stats that she's going to want. Gate two turns armor of Einherjar into uh, just a huge clump of different stats that she wants, plus jump res, I guess. Her gate 3 I don't think is that great. I definitely prioritize that last, but I have had so many shards of her that I just, you know, keep, I'm just going to keep maxing her gates as they come out. Gate 4, more good stats. And then her gate 5 is going to take her health draining move and um, make it a little bit better. It, it It's going to boost her healing capacity before using the move just to make it all the more efficient at doing its job. So definitely... Definitely worth it. I um, If you're still in the process of raising her, I would definitely prioritize getting that gate 5. Um, although if it's going to be a long wait, you might want to prioritize 2. But since she's a little bit easier to obtain than your average limited unit, if you play the game long enough, you'll have tons and tons of her shards. So I'd just say just max everything out. Get her as statted out as possible. So yeah, that is it for the unit screen. Next up, let's go ahead and enter the training hall and see what her moves do. Okay, and here we are at the training hall. So first things first, take a look at her jewel gain. Now, given how awesome her reactive is at long range draining jewels back, that's not going to matter that much, but it's still kind of good to have in case like everybody's being close range. So the first move on her sub or sorry, her main kit, is going to be Breakneck Leg, and this is going to be a CT down move that also has P defense and M defense, and it's a teleport with pretty decent range. That's what it looks like on a Thunder enemy. So one of the really nice things about Oct is that while she's a tank and she only has a base move of three, she is very mobile with the combinations of her ability to buff her move as well as her ability to teleport. So that can definitely really help negate the fact that her move under normal circumstances sucks. So speaking of, Destruction Sword is going to do that. It'll raise her move and jump by one. And then if your health is lower than 50%, then you also can get a um, auto regen for one turn and it'll restore a massive amount of health. Just adding to the fact that she is incredibly hard to kill. And that is going to look like this. And now she can move farther. And then she's got a third teleport. 
with her Roaring Rend Axe. And now if your health is above 90%, this is going to function like Naofumi's Hate Reaction where you force aggro, but it's only going to do it for one turn. So it's not quite as good as Hate Reaction, but given all the other stuff that Oct can do, I think that's a worthy price to pay. I Honestly, I think if she had too much aggro drawing and as well as... Um, if she had, like, the ability to do cover, she'd just be just ridiculously broken. But yeah, so one more move on her main is her HP draining move. And this is the one that gate 5 affects. So this one is going to buff her ability to heal, which is good for her close range reactive, as well as her other healing move on her sub. And damage is not too bad. Now one thing to keep in mind is I don't have her hit snowball fully realized, and then she's not really getting hit. So those could be a little bit better. I guess the getting hit is just for defensive stats, but nonetheless. So her sub is more about CC. She's got a poison attack, which can be nice for two hits. Although in the case of her breaking shields, her HP draining and her transformation are better at that anyway. So having multi-hit is less important there. She's also got a little bit of elemental coverage, but I honestly don't think that matters that much. But what is nice about it is that she can inflict days. So in times where CC is viable, she is very good for that. Oh, we might need to drain a little bit of jewels back. But yeah, as we can see, her she's doing not too bad damage. Then finally, or not finally, second to finally, we have her strike attack that not only does it drain HP but it also drains back a bigger proportion of the damage so you know she only did 4500 but she got over 9000 back so just more survivability on her kit so that's just she can just do so much so even if she doesn't do like damage or anything like that particularly amazingly. She just makes up for it in so many different ways. And then last but not least, she's got a magic attack, which uh, if anybody was using her in the Uzuma job plus level, that might have come in handy. So even though she couldn't do a ton of damage in that map, she was still capable of being useful, which I think speaks volumes about her as a character. So it doesn't do a ton, but it does lower evasion and it is 100% hit. And as you can see, not terrible damage. So the next thing that I want to do is get her jewels up really high, then take a look at her transformation state since I was really lucky and ended up getting my hands on the memento. And this time we will try and get ourselves attacked just to show the difference in her reactive in her transformation state. And that is going to be outfit alchemy. And then as an added bonus, this will also restore your health. So just even more survivability on a unit who's already just filled to the brim with survivability. And this reaction is an AoE, lower stats, and it's also 100% hit. I mean, if the enemy can hit her. So definitely not bad there at all. Oh, she also attacks twice when she is in this state with crazy amounts of jewel gain. Oh, so many turns. So the first one is going to be a six hit attack. And now all of these attacks ignore shields, which can be really, really handy depending on what kind of map you're in. So far, I, I don't think we've got anything right now where that's going to be super crazy, but it happens now and again where there's just some global shield thing in a map. And now you can laugh at that. So this first one, the Vivid Strike Hexa, it also has CT, and then it can crit. Actually, I think all of her skills except the last one can crit. So that's going to look like this. And we've lowered his CT. Then we've got Victor's Roll Collide, which this is going to also inflict stun, potentially. And it's a decent little AoE. So let's go ahead and hit both of them with that. So kind of similar to Soul when he's in his transformation state, big AoE stun. 
Now, whenever stun is useful, you know, that can be great. Although you'll find, you know, really challenging maps, they tend to be immune to it because otherwise it's kind of kind of broken, especially in maps where it's like very reaction driven. Next, we've got Mad Palm Shock, and this one is going to raise counterattack power for three turns. So this is actually a pretty good one to use first once you've transformed. And then um, if the, <coughs> sorry, if the P attack and M attack has been lowered, which the reactive will do, then also raise power. And like always, or not always, but like almost always, it is a teleport. This girl is just so mobile. Okay, we should have one more turn. And we will use that for Black Sun Big Bang. So this is kind of her big nuke. And it's 100% hit, and it is strong versus human. So it's not nothing too crazy damage-wise. You got like 11,000, but it's a decent AoE. She could definitely take out a chunk of annoying enemies with that. So I don't think that her transformation state is like super crazy awesome, like the best thing ever, but I think it does offer some pretty sweet utility, some extra CC, a nice big AOE reaction, which I always like. And then the fact that it'll eat through shield, I think makes up for the fact that the damage isn't like insane. So yeah, that is it for my review on Oct. I love her as a unit, and I think she benefited amazingly from this most recent class change. And I think she's a unit that just everybody can have and raise without too much fuss, even if they don't have 100% of her kit. So with that, I will see you all very shortly in the next weekly update, and I will see you all next time.